Hello lovelies, welcome to my post for today. So I've got another page in my altered book art journal, but before I get started on that, I decided to play with my gel plate and some of the scrap effects stamps and stencils. So I had a lot of fun with this. The only thing was the day I did this, it was really, really hot, very humid, very muggy. So my prints didn't quite work the way I was expecting them to. But in saying that, um, I still really loved how they turned out. I got some really nice prints, um, very grungy looking prints that I will definitely use. I have a very bad habit when I do gel prints to forget to show the camera. <laughs> it's one of those things that I just get so caught up in doing and it's so addictive and just you just want to keep going that I always forget. Uh, the one I do end up using is the last print I do and I do show you that one so you'll be able to get a good look at it. So I'm just using, um, this is a very well loved jelly plate and I'm just using some paints from my stash and a good old brayer that is also very well loved and then I'm going in with some stamps and stencils just to create some texture on that background. With gel, gel prints it's all about building layers. Now I didn't really build a lot of layers in this one. Um, these were going to be my starting points but at the time when I did this it was just that hot and that muggy that it just wasn't working too great so I didn't end up continuing but I do end up um, using one of the prints I pulled. The paper I'm using is from um, Daiso or Daisio, however you pronounce it. Uh, we have one here and it's actually calligraphy paper and I find that this works fantastic for gel prints. Uh, it's a good size because if I was to use regular copy paper, it's actually smaller than this gel plate. But it's, it's very much similar to... Um, tissue paper or even the rice paper that you can get from scrap effects it's very similar uh, in texture and yeah I just find it really great to make for making collage pieces it's just really really good this is the print I end up using so as you can see um, as I'm using my stamps on the paint I'm stamping them off onto those other prints that I have made but this is the print I'm going to end up using in my journal and I just I really love how this one turned out so I'm going to pull it up and you'll get to see all that really, really pretty texture and just awesome grunginess. So this is the page I'm going to do. So if you've seen a few of my videos, you know that I bought this book. It's just um, a book, an Ed Sheeran journal type book. Um, and I decided to turn it into an altered art journal. I've done a few pages in it. And this is how I'm going to use my, my print. So... When it comes to collage, I'm not great at using small bits and pieces. I find it hard to blend them all in to make a piece look seamless, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I'm still still experimenting. But I loved this print so much that I wanted to use the whole thing. So I have ripped it in half, and I was only going to use it on this side and try and do something on the left-hand side to blend it all together. But I loved it too much that I decided to use the whole thing and then sort of make that middle section sort of like a bit of white space and you'll see how I achieve that in a minute. So I'm just using gel medium to glue this into the journal. It works well in the sense that it reinforces this paper as well. It's reinforcing um, my spread because this is just a regular book. The paper is, I, I enjoy the paper, it's a really good quality paper but yeah it just um, helps to give the book a bit of sturdiness. And yeah, backing that collage paper onto it um, helps reinforce it a bit. So now I've got my, my piece down, my collage paper down or my gel print. I'm going to get some gesso next and put it in the middle and I'm sort of going to blend these two pieces together. So you can right now you can clearly see that I've ripped it in half and I've got a big piece in the middle that just doesn't quite work. By adding gesso very lightly and blending it throughout the page, it now sort of looks a bit more seamless and it helps blend these two pieces together to look like one piece and it gives me a nice area of white space where I can um, add some focal images. I'm coming in with some stamps more to take off some of that gesso so you can see the pattern behind the gesso so you can see more of my gel plate and my gel print and again with the stencil I'm doing the same thing I'm taking up some of that gesso with a wet wipe 
just so some of that color comes back through and it's helping it blend more. It doesn't just look like I've slapped some gesso down on top of my, um, my piece, which is exactly what I did. But yeah, I should have made sure it was dry properly first. I did rip a little bit of it because it is very thin, but uh, in the end it all works together. I love the way this is coming together. It's looking very grungy, very, very mixed media and I love it. So now I'm coming in with some more scrap effects stamps and I'm trying to remember that I have colored ink instead of using black all the time because I do tend to do that a lot. So I'm just bringing in some of those colors from my background just to add some texture to my page. I'm using gray ink instead of black. One, it's more of a washed out look because I felt once I brought the black in, it was going to be very bold and very it's going to stand out a lot. So I thought I would save that for a bit later. Oh, I've been looking forward to using these stamps. They're so, they're so cute. They're, they're really awesome. And I will um, link to these in my blog post as well. So you can go check them out. And when I want a really, really bold focal image or a really, really bold stamp or stencil, what I do, or stamp specifically, what I do is I stamp with black paint instead of ink. And I just find that this gives me a better, a better image. I've got a little bit of black paint left on my makeup sponge, so I'm going in with another, um, some small stamping, just because I felt it did need a bit more black in the background, a bit more to focus your eye on and really pop off that page. And the fact that there's only a little bit of black left on my sponge means it's not going to be as bold as my focal piece, and it's going to sort of blend into the background a lot better. So I wasn't too... Um, yeah, I didn't, I actually like how this worked. So, and plus nothing goes to waste here. I always make sure to use up everything, including little bits of paint that I have left. I decided to doodle a border around the edge of my page. Again, I should have made sure it was dry. I do end up ripping it in a few places. I'm so impatient. I should have just dried it off. But as I'm looking between these little circles and also my focal image, there's this nice little space there that I thought would look really, really good um, with a quote. So I went through my stencils and I grabbed this one out and I decided to use this phrase down the bottom in black again because it was really going to pop off that page and um, yeah as my focal image as part of my focal image is my quote and I just love this page I really really love how it came together I love the fact that I was able to use that gel plate that gel print sorry and blend it all together and give me this really great page that I love I, I love how this turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed this page and watching, um, watching it come together. And I'll be back real soon with a new one. Bye for now.